Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick. So today's tutorial is a culmination of my gut videos to hopefully give you an argument for making a lifestyle change at the end of this thing. So stick with me. So if you've been watching my uh, gut videos, I did some on uh, allergies, leaky gut, autoimmunity. But essentially this is the lumen here, uh, the tube that goes from mouth to butt. This is specifically small intestine lumen. And you can see that the lumen is made of single cell human enterocytes. And that's just to give a lining. And uh, each cell is connected by this uh, combination of connective tissue. If the combination and the tissue connection is strong, then you don't have, you can have uh, bouncers uh, allow exactly what you want from the food source into the bloodstream. And you are going to have those same bouncers just project anything that you don't want into the poop as waste. So you take in food, you convert and take in the fuel that you want, and you push anything you don't want as waste. Now, some of the waste is fiber, but other parts of the waste are parasites, uh, bacteria you don't like, viruses, corona. So the same model, though, can be said of the blood vessel system, but we'll get into de that detail in a second. This is... Uh, information about the connective tissue, specifically zonulin, a uh, very important um, fiber connective tissue that we underestimate in and don't utilize or don't study in human physiology. But um, through Alessio Fasano, uh, there's uh, some about a decade ago, it was found, especially after infection by certain viruses, that people were lacking that. But the, the cool thing is, if you go to target and fix that, the connections get strong again and you lose that leaky gut. But my theory is that you can also have the same kind of connection lost in your regular blood vessels. So just follow me here. If the connection in the gut is lost, the cell to cell connection and things leak in that you don't want leaked in, the same theory can be carried over to blood vessels. Blood vessels are supposed to hold uh, blood and oxygen and white blood cells or a militia of uh, a potential army to help heal and also help attack. But when the lining of the gut is irritated, there's supposed to be a gut viscous layer, a slimy layer, and then that layer you have bacteria, probiotics, and they do half of the work as far as protecting and allowing the actus bouncers too. But uh, again, we to underestimate that. There's also a slimy layer to the, every blood vessel that you have. And every blood vessel you have, uh, it has its own zonulin connection, but it also relies on that slimy layer. It's called a glycocalyx. So in diab there's enough information now that has attributed the breakdown of that slimy layer in each blood vessel to associated diseases, diabetes, coagulation disorders. That's uh, when you have excessive amounts of blood clotting, um, DVTs, uh, embolisms, um, uh, strokes, uh, also because, uh, related to glycocalyx dysfunction. Um, after any kind of ischemia, which is uh, when you lack blood flow to uh, the brain and heart specifically, but you can lack blood flow to anything, but the brain and heart, usually it ends up as stroke or heart attack, but there's other things that can happen too, loss of organ, kidney failure, but also the, the studies that show if you fix it, it might come back, the organ might come back faster. So the idea is if you have a loss of the slimy layer, and things in the bloodstream, just like the gut, things in the bloodstream allowed to leak out automatically, you might not want that militia coming out of the bloodstream. You only want to come out of the bloodstream during times of attack, uh, during times of damage. And they work very well to fix the damage or c uh, control the attack. But if that slimy layer is gone, my theory that I present to you is that if the slimy layer is gone, that militia will get turned on at a moment's notice. Sometimes when you don't want it to come on, autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, ulcerative colitis, um, uh, problems that essentially stem or equal leaky gut, brain fog, Alzheimer's disease, inflammation, uh, 
So arthritis is a typical example. If you have wear and tear, that's okay. I have a lot of patients that get into their 80s with uh, arthritic knees, but that doesn't mean you have to turn on your autoimmune uh, system to attack those worn down knees. Sometimes all you need is a trigger, an, ant, uh, an infection, uh, a trauma, and then those old arthritic knees from way back when suddenly become painful, initiated by just what I said. So the question is always, well, why did it come on? And I think it's accumulation of damage, just like COVID. I think if you look at COVID in the different parts of the world, why is America have so many cases? And there's political questions, but I think if you take the 30,000 foot view, it's because we have more damage than any other country as far as diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, uh, maybe a little bit of overeating. Smoking, I think, is better. If you looked at the deaths in China, uh, a lot were centered on older men that smoked. Makes sense. If you look at the deaths in Italy, at the aged. Now, there's certainly uh, people that fall in and out of that. But if you look at the deaths in the United States, why are we having so many deaths? Uh, so I'm going to leave that as an argument. However, again, to present what I would suggest is a uh, reason for us having more stuff. I think the glycocalyx has is, is been pounded upon and that makes us more susceptible to damage. This just show, this is a study that shows uh, that you can have uh, irritation from COVID infection. And we all know that it hits the lung specifically and symptomatically, that seems to be the dominant symptom. But I have a, I have a couple people that are surging or in this, this mini surge we're going through. Uh, shortness of breath, anxieties flared up, mood is off, a diarrhea. So every system is being knocked down. And unfortunately, the guys that don't do well, they, I haven't had anybody die. Well, one, um, kind of related to the practice, but it, it, uh, most of the people that do carry on their symptoms for weeks are usually the ones with the biggest or largest amount of comorbidities, obesity, a little bit of insulin resistance, high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, so low vitamin levels. Uh, healthy, uh, unhealthy lifestyle. So unfortunately, again, this is why I try to get my guys to make some changes, uh, not just for COVID, but to beat the other crap that's coming. Because again, you can literally, I can relate this to COVID and my theory of why we're having more uh, outbreaks, but I can also relate it to why the United States has a ton of Alzheimer's disease, has a ton of heart disease, heart attacks and death per year still outnumber the COVID deaths at this point in time, we're halfway through the year. So we kind of poop or ignored the heart attack problem. It's still number one death, uh, number one cause of morbidity in the United States, and it'll probably increase on top of COVID. So uh, this is uh, information that shows that you can just have, if, even if you don't have true end organ damage, you can have lymph flow that changes. So my folks with edema, um, sometimes again, the glycocalyx doesn't protect that slimy layer doesn't protect in the bloodstream and things leak out like extra fluid. And so if you've ever talked to anybody with Durkham's, that's a terrible lifestyle. The extra fluid, the accumulated, uh, uh, fat cells that grow even further, the lipomas that are painful. A lot of Durkham's patients have just, sw they're, they're swollen like the Michelin man. And you, to, you can actually push the fluid out and put it back into the blood vessel and send it to the circulatory system. But because I think that they're, it's a different story, but the same thing, it goes with them, that if you have uh, the blood vessels don't have that slimy layer and they leak more, you'll have edema everywhere. You're not supposed to have that. The piping system's broken, just like leaky gut. The piping system is broken. So... Um, this just has to do with showing that blood vessels have a flow and the flow, if you've ever used a hose and you've put your thumb on the end of a hose, you can turn an easy flow into a harsh flow. And if you've ever uh, watered a garden, you put under high pressure, all the soil gets pushed away and you kind of damage the garden. Same thing with the blood flow in the blood vessels. Sometimes during times of high blood pressure excitement, the flow increases. So if you don't have that slimy layer that's supposed to line that single cell blood vessel, you can have shearing damage to the blood vessels and then add more damage if you don't have that slimy layer. Think of a really good paint job on a Ferrari, but no uh, clear coat, no wax. That paint job is going to still look bad or fade in a couple of years. This is a picture of the glycocalyx. So this is one cell. 
This is another cell, a uh, blood vessel, and this is the space between the cells. This is really like a, a illustrated electron microscopy. And that there is the glycocalyx. Better picture, I love pictures. So here's a beautiful, thick glycocalyx. And here's the red blood cells, and here's a couple of bad guys, oh no, good guys, militia. Militia is supposed to be in the blood vessels. But here's a cell or a picture without glycocalyx. Everything gets into the cell or everything gets in out of the bloodstream into the tissue. And that's where you have the damage. Those of you with Hashimoto's, uh, celiac disease, um, rheumatoid arthritis, this is what I present to you. Mm. Data points that show glycocalyx when it's destroyed can be associated with ARDS. If you remember that, that was the picture that the COVID patients were presenting has. But when you, the, the classic uh, treatment plan for ARDS did not work with COVID patients on the ventilator. Data is old. Uh, it's there if you just look for it. And it's reproducible. Small data, that, uh, small studies that show that you can have, uh, I remember that people were getting better with heparin. That's a blood thinner. Um, again, other old data with uh, sepsis and the glycocalyx failing. And old information. The glycocalyx has been out there for a long time. We've just uh, ignored it because it's such a, it's, it, it, it's so encompassing and involves lifestyle change. And unfortunately, going to your doctor's office, we don't have time to suggest lifestyle change. We hope that you will take what our medicines are, we're uh, giving you and reverse your lifestyle change. But most people don't, unfortunately. Well, mine do. And I take the time to try to find the root cause. That's integrative medicine. But I'm, now, especially, I'm being pushed not to do that anymore because it falls outside the paradigm of insurance-based reimbursement. doesn't make money. I can save lives, but I can't be profitable. And uh, I'm, I'm an employee, so I have to show my worth. Uh, improving lifestyle doesn't add up as a worthy point to be a successful doctor. T totally backwards. I, I don't know if I, I don't agree with that. But anyway, uh, information on uh, inflammation and the glycocalyx missing. So I just scoured the internet, uh, mostly NIH, PubMed, reproducible evidence that has been peer reviewed. So these are just bullet points again and again, target organ damage. So um, how can we fix this thing? Let me just show you what. This is your uh, gut and I've done the illustrations before. This is the food, this is the blood vessel. These are the finger-like projections of microvilli in the small intestine. Food goes this way. Those are finger-like projections. Here's the glyco, I mean, here's the, uh, the viscous layer with bacteria, probiotics. They too are the army and defense. So when food goes this way, sometimes the gate will open up and allow fuel in. Sometimes you'll get other, quote unquote, other in too. And then you end up with waste and it goes out into the toilet. So this is a blood vessel one cell lining thick also. So one cell lining thick, but they have specific functions for digestion. The blood vessels all over the body are one cell lining thick. And there's connections between the blood vessels. I missed one over here. There's also a glycocalyx or slimy layer here. Slimy layer here. It's not called glycocalyx, but slimy layer, but it's called biofilm and bacteria or probiotics. This is a slimy layer called the glycocalyx on both sides, and it's supposed to help uh, with the shear stress and blood flow. Also it's supposed to help keep the militia in the blood vessel until it's needed. So sometimes when you break that uh, connection between the cells, as I was mentioning, the militia get out and cause an inflammatory reaction. If it's uh, infection, you want that. But if it's by mistake, you don't want that. And what happens is COVID gets in, uh, gets into the tissue from the blood vessel. The blood vessel is a highway. So COVID typically enters through the mucosa of the nose or the chest, gets into the blood vessels, and then transported everywhere. And when it gets out of the blood vessels into the tissue, it starts the inflammatory reaction because it gets out and the militia get out. So you have this fight and collateral damage. So the militia doesn't know. It's just trying to defend itself from COVID, but it also it liquid it, it liquefies everything. So that's why you have that. Le that's why you have all those weird symptoms, and every system is off. So that's my theory about what happens. How can we fix it? Well, reversing disease. So if you can make that glycocalyx thick again and, and robust again, then you should be able to tolerate 
the irritation, the attack. You should be able to tame the militia. You should be able to fight COVID. I've got a few patients who have made it through COVID one week and they're better. Now, certainly there's uh, Zithromax, there's uh, the HIV medicine, there's hydroxychloroquine. Um, now there's budesonide as far as a steroid that's inhaled out of Texas. Uh, the studies are there. It's an old medicine. But we're, we're searching. I think that if you eliminate and work on your comorbidities, the elevated cholesterol, the elevated glucose, the hypertension, the smoking, the sugar, the insulin resistance, I think you'll be able to make that glycocalyx thick again. Just like the gut, we want to repair the gut. You want to get that viscous layer again. It's all dependent on food. Well, that's why I think that there's a couple of articles. I've mentioned this before in my old uh, unboxing videos on berberine. Berberine helps. There's also skull cap that helps the gut. And I, post I postulate that the skull cap that I've done in the past, I'll put a link down below, also helps the glycocalyx. So this is all important. I think it's, a, it's just, I'm certainly linking things together, but bottom line is I think it does help with regards to just taking care of regular crap. Those typical morbidities that will probably kill you, heart disease, If we, we'll all make it through. You and, my, you and me will make it through into 2021 and hopefully not have any infection, knock on wood, but uh, we'll still have to be watching out for heart disease, stroke, and cancer. So hopefully this gives you, and this is the last of my studies that I reviewed, I've cut them all over the floor, uh, but uh, because I try to do the research, I try to understand how to motivate you guys to make lifestyle change. And if we're gonna be also surviving COVID, uh, the same things that we do to survive COVID will be the same things or lifestyle change that we do to live to 100. It's always been my profession is, I want to, my patients to be successful. And to be successful sometimes it, it means that you have to have bite-sized changes instead of one massive change, bite-sized changes and continued ongoing trajectory to a summit of some sort. Now, whether you think a hundred, uh, being a hundred years old and independent and taking care of your great, great grandkids is you, I don't, it doesn't matter, but I'm just trying to stop all the other suffering the suffering from fibromyalgia, the suffering from joint pain, the suffering from leaky gut, brain fog, uh, social isolation leading to mood issues, just chronic pain. So if we can stop the suffering and put it out to like a hundred, I think that's the formula. Check out the Blue Zones video I did, and hopefully this gives you a couple of ideas. So I really appreciate you following up until this point, and maybe if you like it, send this to other people who are needing a, a reason to change. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.